I'm Jonah Fox, and today I'm going to be teaching you about microphones, specifically microphones to amplify the harmonica with. Let's go and get started. There are three main categories of mics to choose from, and they each are going to color the sound in a different way. If you don't want your sound changed very much at all, you're probably going to want a standard dynamic mic, which is usually used for vocals and instrument recordings. So a good dynamic vocal or instrument mic, and you can kind of lump them in together, they're not going to color your sound too much. It's just going to make it louder. So this is for players that want their clean and acoustic tone to be much louder or people that like to run large pedal boards. Harmonica that goes through a vocal mic is going to be a little bit cleaner than harmonica through a different type of microphone. And because it's clean, it's going to have a little bit more room to put effects on top of it. Good choices here are the Shure mics like the SM57 or SM58. I myself am personally partial to this mic, which is the Sennheiser E835. I just really like the tone of this mic. <laughs> These vocal style dynamic mics are not really made for the harmonica. And because of that, there's some things you have to deal with. On one hand, they're pretty long and they don't offer you the ability to change your volume, which is really important if you're playing live, though many of them do have an on and off switch. If you want a smaller form factor of one of these microphones that also has volume control that would be really suitable for playing on stage, you might wanna look into the ultimate series of mics at below blows me away productions. There are also some premium harmonica focused mics in this category, like the Jason Ritchie signature mic from the Lone Wolf Blues Company. <laughs> And there's also the Audix Fireball 5, which a lot of people like as well. Before we move on, I want you to be aware that many instrument mics and vocal mics connect using an XLR cable. Most amps use a quarter inch jack, so we're going to need an adapter or a converter to go between the two different types of cords, okay? So when you are using a vocal or instrument mic, in most cases, you are going to need a cord that goes from XLR to a quarter inch, or at least a very small adapter that you can plug in at the end of the cord. Mics that are made for the harmonica, however, usually have that quarter inch jack built right in. Next, if you want that driven and dirty Chicago blues tone, you're gonna wanna check out our next category of mics, the bullet mic. Originally, these mics were sought after because they were cheap and they distorted the harmonica sound in a nice way. Let me introduce a few mics to you, starting with our budget pick, the Superlux D112-C. This mic is at a pretty reasonable price and it performs very well. Not really that much to say about it. It feels a little bit cheap than some of our other mics on here, but I've tried it myself and it sounds pretty good. Sounds like a standard bullet mic. Very similar to the Superlux is the classic Sure Green Bullet. This is the standard choice for a lot of people looking to get a bullet mic. And it has all of the good and bad things that come with bullet mics. It's pretty large, it's pretty heavy, surprisingly heavy, and it it has a good bullet mic sound. It has a very good like classic sound. Now, if that's the sound that you want, this is a solid option to pick. If you wanna stay in this form factor and you do have more money to spend, people make all sorts of custom wooden bullet mics that are really cool. I see these on sale in the Facebook harmonica groups as well as on the store pages of a couple other mic manufacturers like Blows Me Away Productions. They have a couple of these as well. So check them out if you wanna get something a little bit fancier. Especially if you get into custom microphones, just be aware that people get really deep into their mics and they have preferences for the elements used to color the sound of the mic, the shape, and everything else. So one of my preferences is to have a smaller mic. The standard bullet shape is just too large for me. These mics are in general very big and heavy, but if you still want the sound, then there are still more options to look into. One option worth considering is the Bulletini from Blows Me Away Productions. That's what I play with, and it's really nice. It has a hot bluesy tone, 
and it's small. I personally hate the bulk of normal bullet mics, but the Bulletini is perfect. It's just really small. It's a solid, reliable piece of kit, and I think you will enjoy it if you pick one up as well. <laughs> If you also want a smaller mic, but you don't want to get a Bulletini either because of the price tag or some other reason, I would consider checking out a Bottle of Blues, which is a small mic that has a bit of that blues distortion to it. And I think you might enjoy that one as well. And there's some others in this category, like the Shaker mic, which I've tried and I wasn't crazy about personally. These two mics, the Bottle of Blues and the Shaker mic, aren't really bullet mics necessarily but they have a similar sound and for whatever of these mics that you get try if you can to pick up one that has a volume control knob this really comes in handy when you're playing on stage you might want to use it to cut the feedback really quick you might want to use it just to give room for someone else to solo you just want to have a volume control knob if you have the ability to do that and if you don't have a volume control knob these mics are really better for just playing around the house than in playing in front of a crowd next lavalier mics are a thing and they are are kind of a unique, uncommon choice. They can be very clean, and they can also be very hot and distorted. Like if you push a lavalier mic, it's going to have a more distorted sound than your average bullet mic. This can be good and bad. I find that it can make your tone a little bit closer to an electric guitar than a harmonica. I've been recommending the ultra cheap Boya BYM1 for years. Compared to these other mics, it's amazingly easy to cup and it just has a pretty decent sound on a tight budget. However, these often have eighth inch cords, so you're going to need an eighth inch to quarter inch converter to plug them into your amp. They do make some wireless lavalier mics, but I have not tried them yet personally. If you do, let me know how it goes in the comments below. In general, lavalier your mics are cheap, they sound decent, and they're tiny. <laughs> Even though I like them, there are some cons that I want to share with you. These mics have very thin wires, which I personally don't like. They also don't have a volume control, which as I mentioned is very important for playing on stage. And the Boya mic in particular needs a little battery. Now, all of these factors make this a better mic choice for players trying to practice at home as opposed to playing on stage. If you find a better option here or a wireless one that works well for you, let me know in the comments what it is. Some some lavalier mics don't work through amps. I'm just going to let you that know that now. So be cautious when trying to buy new mics. On the topic of wireless, there are also all these receivers that you can buy that will wirelessly transmit your signal from your microphone to your amp. Now, I have only tried these on guitar, so I don't really have any recommendations, but they work well in general. And I've seen players use these on stage for harmonica with no problems. All of these mics that I've shown you so far are going to be a good choice when plugging your harmonica directly into an amplifier. If you are recording your harmonica instead, you might want to look into a condenser mic. I use a Blue Ember mic personally. I've used it for a lot of my YouTube videos. They are a bit more sensitive when compared to a dynamic mic but clean harmonica sounds pretty great through a decent condenser. It really makes the acoustic tone shine. I would really only bother looking into these if you are recording through a computer with an audio interface because condenser mics usually need external power. So these are my suggestions. What are yours? Let me know in the comments. If you want to learn about amplifiers, which you're going to need, then click this video up here. And if you want to get into building a pedal board, you can click this video right up here here when it is released. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.